make it through that entire list this weekend, unfortunately. Or a could I? On yeah. Amazon, a lot to read. It was rough, man. It's it's true. It's true. Hey, that was a good episode, though. Last uh, last Thursday, people should go back. But I think we're gonna top it today. What do you think, Nick? <laughs> oh yeah, this is gonna be a good one. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Sean, um, it is great to have you uh, on our show today, the first show of this week. It's good to good to be back. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Cordy. Where where do we find you uh, find you today? What are you up to? What are you working on today? Well, I'm uh, I'm at home in Vista, California, which is about a ten minute drive to the offices in Carlsbad, and uh, you know, just doing what we've been doing for the past seven or eight weeks, just making sure the machine is running and. Uh, we're, uh, you know, planning to get reopened here and, and probably now almost as importantly is working on getting all the products ready for next year. So lots underway and um, the teams have been working unbelievably well. So uh, together. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. It's 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 a weird time for Callaway and everybody else in golf, but um, we're learning a lot. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. I imagine this is how Dr. Evil would have felt in those movies. <laughs> Uh, what petting we like, the dog? <laughs> yes, we like to start with a hard-hitting, very serious question to get started. At least I do. Cordy doesn't really like my questions, but uh, I find that putting is relatively dumb. What exactly got you into designing putters to start your career? I actually agree with with what you just said. Um, well, I was just kidding, but okay. No, no, but it, but it, it's not dumb, but it should be easy, shouldn't it? I mean. Uh, you know, I do all these events, Nick, and uh, where we fit all these golfers for putters, you know, like like I'm sure a lot of the professionals that work for you. And, you know, I usually start out asking them, hey, are you a good putter? And and almost nobody says yes. And, I, you know, I, I feel sorry for him. I just want to you can't do it anymore because of social distancing, but you want to hug the guy. It's just like. Buddy, I mean, you don't have to be strong or fast or athletic or actually particularly coordinated, but people really struggle with it. And um, so, one, it's the easiest part of somebody's game to really improve. Um, and when I say that, I think you're going to see um, the results can be pretty close to immediate. And as, a, as somebody who creates clubs, um, you have so much creative leeway with a putter. Um relative to other products um and it's you know maybe not quite as much with a blade but with a mallet mallets can look like anything so um you can really sort of exercise your imagination and and creativity that part's a lot of fun mm -hmm. hey to piggyback off of that you've got like putters have been around for hundreds of years how do you go about innovating something that's just been around that long and everything's been tried with it well it's interesting um it, you know pretty much you could say things have been tried, but, but, you know, things change all of the time. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll just give you a little aside back from my old tailor-made days when uh, <clears throat> the teams were, were working on a, a new driver, which ended up be, becoming M1. Uh, the concept that I brought to the team was to this, this new way to make a, a carbon crown. And, you know, everybody said in the room, well, carbon crowns have been around before. I said, that's not the point. Yeah. The, the point is they haven't been done like this and the benefits haven't been used in this way. So sometimes um, what appears to be something that's pretty similar, um, when you really look at the math behind it, it's quite different. And ultimately the performance um, that it would deliver or the way it would meet, to a, meet up with a golf ball is totally different. So um, lots of inspiration from the past, but if you use it the right way with new technology, you get totally different results. So can you give us a little sneak peek into what it is you're trying to maybe develop for uh, the next couple generations of putters that you have or something that okay. you'd like to, to dabble in a little bit? Okay, that is a dumb idea because I can't tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> no, but of course, let me let me say a couple of things, Nick. Yeah. The, the golfers, for the most part, self-admittedly are horrible putters, right? Um, so the, the, the thing that we see right out of the gate. Um, so when somebody says we're a horrible putter, we are trying to, to immediately go into the mode of trying to see what's causing it. Is there a pattern? Um, and and th there's two or three things that happen pretty consistently from golfer to golfer. But the number one most important thing to get people started with is their aim or ability to aim is horrible. 
Um, and it's really interesting because it almost knows no uh, guideline based on handicap. Um, now, things that golfers do, um, uh, the, the, the way they, um, they aim and the way they, they have developed a putting stroke changes by, by ability, for sure. But just their ability to aim properly is so poor. So anything that we can do to help that um, is a, a, a massive and almost an immediate improvement for any golfer. Gotcha. So yeah, the triple track uh, concepts and the different putters you've had and the golf balls. I wish I had one sitting right here, but my dog's yep. asleep. Now. <laughs> I really like that, by the way. I don't know how much of that was your, uh, did you have a hand in or um, are you looking to make a second version of that here shortly? Well, I mean, it's been in the marketplace um, at, at for, before all hell broke loose here. Um, Not very long, but in, you know, for for less than a month, really, yeah. um, and uh, it's just starting to to really take hold on tour. So we're super excited about that. But to answer your first question, my team developed that. So um, and it was, you know, it's funny. Somebody said. You know, I get asked all the time, how long does it take? How long are these things in development? Well, we had been working with a group out of uh, St. Louis um, on the triple track golf ball, that, that technology, which is called Vernier Hyperacuity. And it's basically um, the way the lines are. It's, it's a lot more sophisticated than three lines, but, but the width and the color and the spacing and all of that. Um, but it, it really gets to the, the, the meat of it is it, it really – reacts with your eyesight and how um, your eyesight, your brain are really able to kind of calibrate a pattern and aim it as, in a certain direction better. Um, after we got the deal done, I had a meeting up in Chip's office with the inventors of the golf ball. And we decided we were going to do this on my way back down to my office, which is about a 45 second walk. I called Austin Rollinson, who was our lead designer uh, told him to bring a two ball putter head. Luke Williams, who helps run the putter business with me, said, I want you to bring a straight edge and two Sharpies. He says, well, what are we going to do? He said, I'll just come to my office. And in about five minutes, we had the new triple track putter designed. Yeah. Um, so that part of it, sometimes the, the most profound ideas are also the simplest. Um, but that one we're super excited about. Yeah, as am I for just the average player or someone who might admit that they're uh, a bad putter. Just trying yeah. to track ball with your current putter is a good start, but I think uh, your triple track putters and golf balls together, just making those lines longer um, will really help uh, the average golfer. And I did hear from a little birdie that I was at a presentation at in Canada that uh, Titleist may or may not be looking to do the same thing. So um, Interesting. Your competition and what starts happening with lines on the ball. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see, huh? Yeah, we You're do have pretty good protection that. legally on that, but um, we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of creative ways to try to make the golf sure. look good. Yeah. Hey, hey, Sean, what's your um? So if you're talking to someone and they say, you know, I get my Sharpie out and I have one of those template things and I draw the nice big line on it and I got you know got all my stuff and whatever. What's you know trying to convince somebody that hey you should use the triple track. What's kind of your, your argument to convince someone to, to make that switch? If they're sold on the line, they love using a line. What's the switch to the triple track? Well, first of all, if Cordy, if they were going to try to draw the lines on it, that actually, you should grab a beer, pull up a chair and watch somebody try to do that. It's, it's pretty it difficult bikini. because yeah. it's, you know, it's a curved surface. And, and so the, the science behind it is it, it, it um, it's the color. So it's the two blue lines with the with the red line. That part people can figure out. But to draw those lines straight on a curved surface is really difficult. And the amount of machinery that we had to design, develop, and then buy to, to be able to do that is incredible. But to, to your point, to, to answer your question, um, golfers will align three lines versus one about 28% better. Um, it's just this, it's the same technology, the, the hyperacuity or vernier acuity is the same technology that um, they use to land planes on aircraft carriers, right? So, or the Navy would. So it's, that's a pretty important thing to get right. Um, so, um, and then when you, there's a couple of things that happen with triple track ball and putter in use. Um, it doesn't go to 28%, it goes to like 80% uh, aligned better. It's actually like 88% aligned better. But the second part of it, and this is really sort of the hidden gem, 
because the, you have the lines on the ball and the lines on the putter that you match up, your centerness of contact, the consistency of your contact point goes up by 108%. Um, so golfers are hitting it off the center of the putter a lot more often. So now if you think of, okay, do I have my line right? Then the second part of making a putt, especially a breaking putt, is does my speed match the line? If your speed is more consistent, and it would be because you're hitting it more in the center, uh, then the degradation that you would get from hitting it off center, you're going to start to hit those lines a lot better and your reads are going to get better. So it's just, it's a way easier way to putt. Um, and guys, I mean, what we see is the real reason why golfers struggle with putting is because they don't really have a process. Um, and, and when you watch tour players practice putting and go about their routine, when they play there, they are insanely, uh, intense about their process. Most golfers get up, bring a golf ball. They have no idea where it is in their stance, whether it's inside their left toe, inside their right toe. It varies by four or five inches from putt to putt. I see it all the time and you know, nothing's ever the same. So triple track it really begins to bring process to putting and it's, it's just a way better, way easier way to go about it. Yeah. No, so you've done some very cool things with that design. In your opinion, let's spin that topic just on its head. What's been the, what do you think is the worst putter design that you've ever seen? Whether <laughs> that I've ever done or ever seen. <laughs> well, how about ever seen? Now you can. <laughs> okay. Cause I've, I've had a doozy or two. <laughs> I've had a doozy or two. All right. Uh, the, the, the worst one. Um, well, there's been some ugly ones, right? Um, you know, Bass Ackward is, was, was pretty ugly way back when. Um, I've never been a big, big fan of the toe up stuff. Um, you know, so that, that part is, is sort of weird to me and, you know, and a lot of it just depends with what you grew up with, but you know, I grew up with something with a lot of toe hang and a lot of rotational force and, and I kind of put that way. So you get something that doesn't want to rotate at all and it just feels like it goes back dead shut all the time. So not a big fan of that, but I, I have seen it help some golfers. Yeah. We've been messing around. I've got a, an MOI measurement machine. So yep. Uh, Uncle Jack's putter from the 80s yeah. Masters. Absolutely. Thing, I don't know how uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on MOI, but the MOI on this is 7,000 grams. It's over 7,000 grams per centimeter squared. This is, would be illegal if it was a driver. It's pretty awesome. Yep. What are your thoughts yep. on uh, high MOI putters similarly to this giant thing that Jack used? Yeah, well, I, I, I think I think they're awesome. Um and, you know, but I, I would say this, uh, Nick, just like with drivers, you get to a, a point where, you know, the next thousand points of, of MOI are, are pretty insignificant for performance. And in order to get there, you have to start making the product look a certain way. Yeah. Um, and typically well, with what? a blade, you get something that's massive like that yeah. with new materials, all kinds of things that we can do to get huge MOI um, relative to what you have right there without sacrificing the aesthetic right so at what moi do you feel like the diminishing returns get too small so around six thousand six thousand yeah yeah makes sense all right another point you kind of hit on that one i've got a putter here this is one that maybe you even had a hand into it i a, did that was my baby okay so i got this one from a, a tour player it was it's yep. a putter super light so this yep. one has a ton of toe hang yeah um, friends at ping uh, talk about how the toe hang influences where the ball will go, but through their human testing, they're showing that people who have a lot of toe hang tend to miss putts to the right. They keep the face more open. I know uh -huh. if you're talking to your group, you suggest that the more toe hang you have or the closer the toe is to the ground when you balance it, the more closed the face tends to be. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. And, and I would say, um, I would say this and, and the, the most of the work that we've done on this, um, it's been in two buckets. One is our own research and yep. two uh, has been working really, really closely with Phil Kenyon. And, and, you know, I'm sure most of, most of your uh, professionals would, would know who Phil is, but Phil's to me, Phil is Phil and Mike Shannon are, are really the, the two preeminent instructors in the professional game for sure today. Um, so I would say this, um, when we were developed, I, I won't go there. That's a long story. I, I, I let, let, let me go in a different direction. Um, 
it would be really simple for us to say there's a law. Yeah. Correct. And 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 it's just mathematical truth that this happens. But the issue that you have is you have human beings, knuckleheads like you and me that get in the way of, of these things. Yeah. Um, so let me go back. I'll tell you a little bit. So when we were working on movable weight at the other place years and years ago, 2003 and 2004, uh, with the R7 quad, if you took a heavy weight and put it out on the toe, the, the golf club would work a certain way, right? That golf club would, the toe would, would go, uh, would rotate less and that would be um, less draw bias, right? Or more fade bias for most golfers. And it would be that way for about 75% of golfers. And then you'd get 25% that would hook the hell out of the thing, right? Yeah. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So it, w what you get is you get the human element that, that really um, gets in the way of math sometimes, right? Um, yeah. you know, and so, but what we see is very different than what Ping is saying. Um, that the the majority of people, and it's not a big majority, but it's the majority of people. When you get them a putter with more toe hang, will typically want to rotate it more. That putter has a higher rotational value, and most people will do that. The reason why people would miss to the right can be a whole bunch of things, yeah. not the least of which is is aim. Yeah. Um, but it's a whole bunch of things. But um, I would say what we've seen, and then working with Phil and Mike Shannon. Uh, we feel very, very confident in, in our position here. Yeah, and I can see it going both ways. Uh, to your point, with human beings, you get all sorts of chaos. Like, uh, yep. for example, more toe hang, I could see the face opening more on the backswing. It's more You're right. Do that. And then yep. when you push on the shaft on the way through, you could actually push on the shaft and open the face more. Or just having more open of a club face that needs, means it needs to close more degrees. So all of that could have an, uh, an impact to it. Or you could be a putter uh, just to go on the other side of the spectrum that uh, maybe opens the face, but then when they get closer to the ball, they actually don't keep pushing on the shaft, and then the face would twist more. Right. So what? what I, no, I, I agree a hundred percent with you, Nick. And so what we'll do is is we will go. It, we developed a machine called Odyssey Fits that I, I don't know if you guys have um, the the board. We did it with whole more putts. It's a great yeah. little device, and Phil it. is really. Um, I call it Phil Kenyon in a box because Phil was was really helpful in that. And as we were developing that, yeah. um, you know, we want to do what's right. But our job at Odyssey is also to sell putters. Right. I mean, that's that's right. that's how I afford these beautiful pink sweaters. So um, to do that, uh, you know, I want these things to be as linear as possible. And when I was saying to Phil, I'm really looking to try to come up with a protocol that would go this way. He says, well, you can do that, but I'm not going to put my name on it. So, so then it was, okay, so there's a path and, and it's, it's sort of, like I said, with the metal wood, you either accept the change or you can fight it, right. Or, or, or work, work against it, how you just demonstrated. And most people will do it. So what we'll do with, with fits, this um, Odyssey fits device, it will have two protocols. You either can go this way and the decision tree goes here. So if you're an acceptor, then we'll put you and miss it to the right. Your aim is okay. We're going to get you into something that rotates more. Yep. If you are somebody that fights that, then we're going to go the opposite direction. That's awesome. I think golf needs uh, way far more systems thinkers like what you're trying to outline there of a, uh, a process to get fit for a putter than the chaos that we really have in, in putter fitting now. Um, I, sort of piggybacking off of that, if you could tell one thing to all the amateur golfers out there that would maybe help them putt better, uh, what might that be? Develop a process. So, and what I mean by that, um, Nick, and I, I, if you haven't figured it out by now, I, I, I sort of talk in stories, but um, in one of these um, events that I did where, you know, we fit literally 200 people in a day, which is interesting. Um, but I, I remember being in Dallas and uh, the club champion of this uh, club that I was at came up, uh, really good player. He's a one handicap. And I said, okay, Terry, let me watch you hit some putts. And he gets up there, hits the first one, about an eight footer straight up the hill. Um, and he, when he stands up to it, he's got the, the ball about, I would say two inches inside the ball of his left foot. He's a right-hander. And I would say it's just inside his eye line. So it's a, a pretty normal position. Hits the first putt, makes it. And then I said, okay, are you a good putter? He says, well, I'm really inconsistent. I said, okay, let me keep watching. The next one, it's about five inches back. 
um, of, from where the first one is. And, and it, it, almost even with so he, he moved his eye line also about two inches and he hit a dead right. And I said, are, are you are you are you just kidding around with me? He says, what, well, what are you talking about? And he said, well, he hit another one. And it was all over the ice. Right. So, I mean, it's just all over the place. And so, number one, if you don't have the ball in your stance in the same place, that there's your aim is going to be off the amount of rotation you need to have to hit a line is totally different there's no way you can be consistent and the the biggest reason why golfers are inconsistent is because they, they have no their, their fundamentals are they, they they haven't even thought of it yeah so, i totally agree with uh, you uh, sameness in golf like all the way up to the full swing is so underrated yeah, uh, I know I spend a bunch of my time teaching people just how to do the follow through and do it the same way every time. Now, mine tends yeah. to get a little shorter than most. You're not over flexing your elbows and trying to see how far oh. you can move the shaft. Yep. After. But the same thing goes for putting. Try to keep some of the variables. They don't all have to be the same, but keep as many right. constant as you can. Yeah, agreed. I like your hey, advice. Sean, your is- stories are so much better than Cordy's. That was a really good one. <laughs> Hey, I do have, I have a question for you, Sean. What does your putter fittings look like? What, what does that mean? Because I think a lot of people have different um, different ideas about what a, what putter fitting means in general. So curious what, what yours is, your definition of that, what that looks like. Yep. Um, you're breaking up a little bit. I was, are you there, Cordy? Yeah. Can you hear me? The question okay. is really, uh, yeah. How, do, how should people go about buying a putter? What should a putter fitting look like? Yeah. Well, the first thing that that we try to do is we, we try to understand a golfer's miss bias. That's that's the first thing. Um, and and we try to get golfers to be honest with us. Golfers um, are, are wonderful rationalizers and uh, and and they're optimistic people, which I love. Uh, but we want to try to get to the truth as quickly as we can. So and, and what we're really trying to do is we're trying to understand a pattern. And then from there, we try to look and see what, what's causing the pattern and then what we need to do to, to change things a little bit um, to be able to create a process that will create a pattern that's more consistent. So, um, th- so w- w- n- number one, it's just a simple conversation. And then two, um, you know, it's not the same for everybody, um, but we start to look at what's causing the issue. If it's, you know, if you got a straight in six footer to win the, member member and your 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 buddy's watching you and you're nervous and you leave it two feet short and three inches to the right uh, you know what causes that other than nerves and 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 we try to get to the the point and from there we begin to work on it and um it's always instruction and equipment together i'm a very very firm believer that the golf club creates the swing helps to create the swing and that can happen in a positive way or a negative way so we, we try to look at that, understand it, and then try to work with the equipment to really begin to make the process more consistent. So that's a great first question for everyone at home to uh, recognize. Uh, which way did the putt go? Where do you miss? What's your tendency that way? How many people, uh, Sean, do you think from 15 feet recognize that they have a missed tendency and can actually answer your first question? It's a really good question, Nick. I'd say half. Half, um, yes. I feel yep, like that's half, there too. Yep. Right. Um, and then, but, and a lot of the people will say, I'm just so inconsistent. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, that's a good answer too. So when that happens, the first thing we begin to work with is to make sure that we get you into the same setup and posture and ball position every time. Uh, because be li- people for that triple track putter and ball. You, you no got it. Whatsoever. That. that that's where a lot of the ideas came from. You know, I, 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 I'm at least, I did 1500 to 2000 fittings last year, um, in four or five months. And, you know, it, it, as your guys do, and you know what you see. Um, so you can help and equipment yeah. can really help. Hey, uh, 10 years from now, what do you think will be different about putter designs? Everything. Um, oh. yeah, I do. I, materials are going to change dramatically um the How science so? what do you what do you, uh, what do you see changing in materials um well i mean the the process has really been more i think it's going to follow similarly to drivers and now irons are sort of 
becoming more like woods, the way they, they work and operate. Um, so putters have, for the most part, have been very rigid faces. And if you have a face that doesn't flex or move in any way, I would say the design and development of those products, for the most part, is an art project. Um, there, there, there isn't a lot of science that goes into it. So when I say it's the, the art project, it's a really important part of it still, yeah. right? Cause you, you need to look at the, that putter and say, you know, I, I always tell people, um, that my groups in industrial design, our job is to create lust that, so when a golfer looks at that, they lose their mind for it in a positive way. Right. And, and we have to do that with all of the products. So. Um, we've got to be able to move a golfer a certain way. Putters are still largely that way. Um, but as we start to get more into faces that are in movement, um, to, to be able to impact and influence role in a certain way, uh, materials are going to change a lot. Strength to weight ratios and creating super high MOIs and smaller packages, all super important, really cool stuff. Um, shapes that, that we can recognize pattern with like triple track and, and things like that, that can be done th through shape as well as through lines. Um, so it's, it'll look totally different. I, I it'll, it's going to look totally different in three or four years. Yeah, no, I like your vision on all that too, Sean. And uh, I've, I've been to your, your plant a couple times to see the, the CAD design and then where you build some of those clubs and there, it looked like they were doing some really cool innovations on the intricacies of uh, what you're just describing as the high MOI putters that are smaller. I right. Build those with uh, some amazingly uh, intricate cuts that you'd have to make in metal that they still can't even uh, perform on a mass scale now. I know they're working on that. So I think it's right. Doing that. And, 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 and honestly, Nick, that's before we really, really get started yeah. with with AI. And, and I can tell you, we're knee deep into it right now, AI and putter faces. And it's pretty crazy stuff we're coming up with. Cool. I think that's the uh, a piece of golf instruction and golf putter design and golf club design that you guys are doing a nice job of. We're trying to lead that way in AI uh, here soon. I've got a, a new project to probably share here in the next month or so about uh, golf swings and AI. So that's I think great. Your AI and the supercomputers that you're using it and all the really smart people that work there. You've yeah. Got some awesome stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, Probably thinking like a, a question that I'm finding somewhat interesting is that I feel like everyone's putter designs have been massively influenced by a ping answer. Obviously, mm -hmm. every OEM has a, a putter style like an answer to. Are there any other putter designs of yesteryear that have been, um, I guess, muses for you? Anything in particular come to mind? Yeah, but but I think in, in bits and pieces, Nick. Um, so uh, an 8802. Um, is just so magnificently beautiful, and and yep, there you go, and and really really difficult to design well. Um, we did one, uh, Toulon Design did one, um, which we called Latrobe, um, I, I think for good reason. Um, but to to machine that, and and I worked on that along with. Roger Cleveland worked on that a little bit with us. Austin Rollinson did, but to, to get that really right and machine it right. I mean, you can look at a lot of milled versions of 8802 and they are, they are experiments that did not go well. They're very hard to do. Um, and I think we did just a, took a long time for a putter that we don't sell very many of, but that sort of connects you a little bit more to, you know, in the end, we're club makers, right? And I, I, we're sort of Willie Octorloni with a with a bitchin' uh, tool set. But um, so, and 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 the projects like that really kind of get you rooted. Um, so that's one. Um, but there's been some great ones, and and you know, one of the ones that I was involved in at the other place, uh, the spider putter is that's a really cool design. Our number seven is an unbelievable design in the two ball. The two ball you haven't really seen copied because we have such incredible IP around it that they haven't been able to. But um, we've got some new two ball designs in the hopper that I think are going to blow people away. Cool. Cordy put that up on Twitter. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah, everywhere. You, you mentioned uh, weight of that. Which part was that you held up earlier? You said it was super light. Yeah, this one's 314, so I know that's not very typical. Now, what are you making most of yours at right now, Sean? Between, um, typically between 350 and about 365. 
and that's you know that putter that you have there that was done in like 2002 or 2003 the average green speed back then uh was about nine um or ten maybe on the pga tour it wasn't faster than ten um now adam hadwin told me i don't get nervous on tour until they tell me they're 15 or 16. so as as green speeds have gotten fast really fast yeah. head weights have gotten heavier what, so that's, what is your thought on that? I was, I was talking to a few people, it seems like, but David Orr, um, yep. the putter instructor, was talking to him and he was talking about um, how a lot of putters are just so heavy. He was talking about how, you know, putters were lighter and that a lot of people are going back to a lighter putter, putter and he saw the benefits of that. Like, what, what are your thoughts on, on weight, of weight of putters? I, I, I would agree. And, and um, if, it, if, if what he said was in, in the context that you just laid out, Cordy, I would agree, agree with some and disagree with an, uh, some parts of that. But here's what, uh, here's what I would say um, we see. I would say that overall weight of putters has gotten too heavy for almost all golfers. When I say almost all because as soon as you do that, somebody wants one that's, you know, a thousand grams. And, but, it, you know, if you get somebody that's pretty jiggly over a putt, weight happens to be pretty, you know, that can be a friend to that person. Um, but for the most part, what we've seen is this evolution of three things happen. Uh, and it's really been driven by um, agronomy, green speeds getting faster. Head weights and putters have gotten really heavy. So um, to next point, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, ping putters were about 290 grams. Now they're 350 to 360. Um, and grip weight in about 2012 changed dramatically when Superstroke got really popular. Um, grip weights at the time typically were around 80 or 90 grams. Now all of a sudden they were 50. Those big Superstroke grips are very, very light because they're foam based. So what happened is swing weights went from high C's to low D's way back when to all of a sudden you got really heavy heads, you got really light grips, uh, you've got a shaft that hasn't changed. So now you've got a shaft that is effectively way too weight, uh, way too soft. Um, and there's a lot of flutter there and swing weights got to F3. I, I mean, it, it got totally out of whack. Mm -hmm. So that's where we came up with um, the, uh, the stroke lab shaft, which totally rebalances it, gets swing weights down into the high D, low E range. Shaft is stiffer, shafts a lot lighter. Um, overall weight is about the same, but the balance is, is totally different. And golfers have really, really enjoyed it. I mean, we literally have hundreds in play on professional tours worldwide. So um, that's been a very, very sizable innovation. Yeah, I think it's great. And I, I see it all the time, too, when we've got a, a display of putters sitting out on our putting green here. The ones people grab at first, especially the worst they are, they tend to be the heavier, bigger ones. So yeah, we need to appeal to some of that, too. The first one foot of how a ball should take off the putter and start rolling, uh, I think is uh, very uh, insignificant in the whole process of what's going to happen. Uh, there are many ways to make that thing work. Can you identify the how you would sort of uh, model out, or you can feel free to disagree with me on that as well, uh -huh. how far it should fly, how much it should bounce, when it should start skidding, yeah. um, just the over analytical political process that's been used on that yeah i mean you know there's so many different metrics and and you know quintic has got their own and 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 i would say that they probably understand this you know probably better than every than everyone um but i'll speak more in general what we what we typically see from really really good putters is uh, a positive angle of attack so the the the, the putter is actually rising as it gets towards the golf ball um we see and we see that somewhere around two degrees give or take yep. um so we see a launch angle of about two and a half degrees or so um and we do want to see that ball getting into forward roll as it comes off the putter um you know not crazy but um you know, we haven't gotten to the point where we, we've discovered too much forward roll. We have for some players, but if you just looked at it um, in a lab experiment, you would want 100 RPMs of forward roll if you could get it uh, and then be able to control the, the, the ball speed and the distance that would come with that uh, and settle into a roll as quickly as possible. So, you know, it depends to answer your question um, how long the putt is, but let's say on a 15 foot putt, 
I'd say it's somewhere of the, you know, the first 20% of it. Um, you'd like to reduce the amount of skid and roll in that first 20%, you know, for the most part, as much as you could. Um, but it's Nick, it's so player dependent. It's crazy. And I could tell you another story about that. Well, you're starting to mess around with how far the ball is going to roll when you start changing those variables. Same thing with like an insert. Um, inserts are really nice for changing the sound that's produced, but uh, an insert tends to be softer. So then you need to hit the ball harder. Um, and when you start playing around with the different face variables, you, you can really alter how good someone is at putting or how bad they are. You can really help them that way. Yeah, it's, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is sort of the humanization of or humanizing performance gains. So um, when you start to, in putting, we try to make sure that we, we strike a balance or a harmony in the way a putter sounds, how loud it is, um, the overall forward roll, um, and um, the, the impact ratio or the fancy word for sort of ball speed, right? Um, and so if it sounds, I gave you two drivers and one was really loud and one was really quiet. And I said, everything is the same. Which one do you think you're going to hit the farthest? You would pick the loud one, right? Oh, I'm taking that right. Nike Sasquatch. Any you day. remember that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, but the problem is in a lot of putters, the, the ones that are quiet have more speed. That, that's really difficult to, to control distance for golfers. Or so we try to get it if, if like a milled putter, we tried to make sure that's one reason why the Toulon design shaft was a little stiffer because we could we could play with the impact ratio with that. So the versus an inserted putter, um, the the milled putters typically have more sound, and because it has more sound, I also wanted it to have a little bit more speed, so that the sound and the speed um, are are in better harmony. Way easier for a golfer to correlate. You're doing some very intricate and cool things in there for sure. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, we know a little bit. So one of the secrets is there's new two ball putters coming out, right? That's <laughs> I learned that. You have that on Twitter already. <laughs> we broke that. Is there any other news that we can break, Sean, or anything else that we should look forward to? Cordy, I, you, you, you look like you're bulking up. <laughs> <laughs> Cordy oh, needs man. to take more steroids. We learned that <laughs> on the show. More HGH for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just hope everybody can get out and, and start playing and uh, your stores get busy and golfers come in and, and um, you know, spend the time they need to to improve and, and get better and enjoy the game more. And I appreciate that, too. And if you can't get into a golf deck, I don't know if you've heard about this, Sean. We've been giving away uh, free virtual lessons, which is basically a resume, uh, recorded Zoom call that you can make with a coach. Oh, that's that awesome. On all over. So if anybody wants to take a golf lesson, you just have to download our Golf Tech Clubhouse app and you can uh, schedule it right in there. So we're trying to help as much as we can. It's cool. Very cool. Awesome, guys. Well, Sean, thanks for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. Um, definitely going to try out some triple track. Um, I have these around here. I didn't get the triple track, though. Do you have one? I mean, you have I don't. I have I have these these laying around here, but I didn't get any triple track. Uh, You're doing it wrong, Cordy. The other day. I, I don't <laughs> know what's do. going on. I um, know somebody who fun. can get you some, Cordy. We have some in every center. So if you if you have a golf tech open in Minnesota right now, just go grab a couple of theirs. Tell them Sean sent you. Exactly. Awesome, guys. Well, Sean, thank you for your time. We appreciate it so much. It was cool to learn. I always like going behind the scenes and hearing uh, kind of the reasons and the whys behind the gear that we play. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Cordy. Enjoyed it very much. Not, Nick, thanks. Nice to uh, catch up with you. Yes, we'll do it again. Hopefully before the PGA show. Assuming yeah, I hope so too. happens again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, pal. See you guys. All right, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. See you guys. Bye.